again, thank you so much for being in the service today, and thank you to those joining us on the live stream and the overflow, and on, boy, uh, how many other locations can we kind of figure something <laughs> out for, right? Um, but we're just thankful to have everybody coming together, and I want to tell you this morning, it's a privilege for me as your pastor to be able to, to, be able to bring the Word of God to you and to share that message with you, and I hope it's helpful to you and to help you to understand that you have a a great God who loves you and has an incredible plan for your life. And sometimes we become dull to that truth. And may God just let a real sense of renewal and refreshing sort of sweep over us as we uh, celebrate that this Christmas. Well, today is the third Sunday in Advent. And so, again, we're uh, glad that you're journeying with us. And uh, we're journeying towards Christmas and kind of our theme for this Christmas season and, um, and uh, letting the star guide us, and uh, like that star did uh, thousands of years ago, and how they guided them towards the Christ child, and the one who ultimately ended up giving his life for you and for an I, and so that we could have eternal life. And um, so today, we still want to follow that star as long as we can to keep reminding us of what Christmas is all about. And so on this third Sunday of Advent, we're going to be looking at the whole focus of joy that we've been reading about, that the, the candle was lit about, and uh, so hopefully it'll be encouraging to you as well. And we're going to share a message today called Joy for Our Journey. So if you have your notes, your note sheet, uh, that's available online as well. You can just kind of tap there at the message today and get the note sheet in behind it. Um, but just pull out your note sheet and let's kind of have a good time with this. And uh, a little bit of joy is, I think, always called for. And, uh, and so, when, and, uh, so we're going to have that fun today. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 2, verses 9 to 14. So if you want to know the scripture we're going to be focusing on today, that's where we're going to be, Luke chapter 2, 9 to 14. I'm going to be reading from the New International Version, and you can uh, decide what uh, version or translation or paraphrase, whatever it is you like to hang on to, um, to follow through. And so we're going to be looking at that as we look at joy for our journey. Joy is one of those things that is like a fuel. It's a fuel that we need that kind of brightens our journey. And as a matter of fact, as we live life every day, if we didn't have some joy, oh boy, we'd be pretty ho-hum, wouldn't it? It'd be, it'd be pretty sad. And everyone would be walking around like, looking like they've been weaned on lemons. And uh, it, everyone would just be, a, just be a sad, sad situation. And, uh, and so, um, so joy is that fuel that can brighten our journey. It's that it's a, it, joy by itself is a, a fascinating concept. I don't know if you ever thought of it because joy is really quite fascinating. It's often misunderstood. It's often confused with happiness, but it's not the same thing. Joy and happiness are two different things. And uh, you'll have to come back for another message on happiness if you want to know the difference. And we can get into it then. But it's not the same thing. And so... But joy is one of those things that regularly shows up in situations, oftentimes when you least expect it. And uh, I remember when I was going through some of my heart issues with the, that I was having, and uh, I remember when my son and my grandson showed up at the door. I mean, I was in pain, but all of a sudden, joy showed up. And I tell you, it brought tears to my eyes. I was so excited to see them show up, and they drew, drove from eastern Ontario and, and showed up, and, and little Dax was there at the door and saying, hi, Grampy, and I couldn't ask for a greater touch of joy that, that could have showed up. And so joy oftentimes shows up in times that you're just not expecting it, and, uh, and I love that about joy, and, 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 and of course, that's what happened on that first Christmas. Joy showed up when all those shepherds were out in the field, those burly men out there, uh, they were often referred to kind of as uh, the crooks of the day. They, were, they didn't have a very good reputation, so I know we love to look at those wonderful shepherds and say how sweet and innocent they are. Shepherds in that day did not have that reputation. They were not sweet and innocent, all right? They were oftentimes looked at some of the lowly of society, but those shepherds that night, um, I think, give us a pretty good picture 
of how joy can show up unexpectedly. These men that are out there, they weren't cowardly men in any way. They were a rugged lot. They were used to living in the outdoors. They were used to cooking over the fire. They were used to wild areas. They fought off predators. They did all kinds of things to protect their sheep. And uh, they would have been ready to ha- sort of fight off bandits and thieves and anything necessary. They were ready for it. But on that night, as we read the biblical account there in Luke chapter 2, one thing they weren't ready for was that great news that was when the angels appeared in the night sky and they began to announce the good news. Shepherds weren't ready for that. And matter of fact, before we get to the joy, one thing happened to those shepherds and, and those shepherds, those, those strong men who were ready to fight off any kind of predator, they became weak at their knees, and they fell down at the, at the sight of the heavenly host, and, and that was beginning to, to really announce good news to them. So let's just jump in that, to that, to Luke chapter 2, 9 to 12. Uh, it describes that whole scene very beautifully. It says, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. I mean, that's to put it mildly, all right? I think I'd be terrified too. All right, But the angel said to them, and this is great, do not be afraid. Now, I don't know about you, but every time an angel shows up, what do they start the conversation with? Do not be afraid. Now, most of us, we walk around and we say, hi, how are you? I think the angels walk around and say, hey, don't be afraid. That's how they always started their conversation. Don't be afraid. And so they said that that night. Say, I bring you good news that will cause you, and I love this, great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. The angel had good news for these guys that were there that night. News that would cause great joy for all people. But the angel and his group, even though they came in peace and they were announcing the world's greatest birth announcement I think you could ever get, they first had to deal with the shepherds and they had to help the shepherds to get over their fear. They had good news, they had great joy, but they also had to overcome the fear. Let me stop here a moment. That's pretty much the way the gospel is these days. It's good news. It brings great joy in people's lives when they begin to discover a Savior who loves them and can redeem their life and give them hope where there is no hope. But it's amazing to me the number of people who have fear over God. I've seen great men who, as a matter of fact, in my upbringing, I've seen guys who, you know, they go into bar fights and they could take on the world. But when you talk to them about Jesus, they just crumble. They're fearful about what that may mean for them. Do you see what I mean? Good news, great joy, but yet fear often has to be overcome first. I mean, you might know people like that as well. And But on this particular first Christmas, the shepherds or the angels knew that if they were ever going to receive that good news, they had to overcome their fear. And that's why I said, they said, do not be afraid. This morning, I want to remind us that you don't need to be afraid of the Lord. He wants to give you great joy into your life. And we're going to talk about that. Even joy in times of pain. God wants to give you great joy. And that joy is for all people. But we oftentimes have to overcome our fears. And so then after, after they overcame their fears, they were given the good news. And of course, I love how the story unfolded. The whole sky erupted full of joy. And angels begin to begin to sing. Matter of fact, Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14 refer to what happened next. Suddenly, there it is, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. So this morning, I want to give you three aspects of joy that I want you to consider as you journey towards Christmas. I don't know your home, I don't know what you're going through in in detail, but I want you to consider these three aspects of joy, and I think they're very applicable to all of our lives, no matter who we are. First of all, I want you to to sense from this story that 
Joy and pain coexist. Joy and pain coexist. For a number of years, I was the chairman of World Hope International, which is a humanitarian organization. And one of the privileges of being a chair of that group, and, um, and it's, it's our own humanitarian organization that's part of the Wesleyan Church, and one of the privileges was being able to coordinate and to see uh, uh, water brought to villages and people who um, otherwise went through very dangerous and difficult circumstances just to have the basic water uh, for their village. And so it's, a, it's and there's lots of amazing organizations that are trying to bring clean water to locations right around the world today, and I'm very thankful for every single one of them because there's nothing as powerful as clean water that can really come and help a community. Uh, it's like the gospel itself coming in uh, to the community. I'm not saying it's the same, but it, it feels like that living water just comes into those communities. So unsafe water in our culture, in our world today, is, accounts for millions of deaths every year. It also limits many opportunities for women and for children, who are most often the ones who are uh, having to go and find the water for their families. And so, again, for these reasons, there's lots of great nonprofits that are trying to bring clean water to those communities. But this morning, I tell you all that because I want to show you a picture. All right, so let's see if we can get that picture up on the screen. Love the picture. I really do. And um, the picture is simply to illustrate for you that in this picture, I love the exuberant smiles that are on their faces as they hug a jug of clean water. And, um, and it's just incredible. You can leave that picture up for a bit, if you would, please. That'd be great. And, um, but I love that picture, and I love the smiles that are on their face. And I, to me, it just says pure joy over something as simple as uh, a cup of cold water and done in Jesus' name. And so as you look at that picture this morning, you see the smiles on their face, but one thing you need to remind yourself is that even though many aspects of the, even though they have that clean water, many aspects of their life still have, don't change. Those children that you're looking at in the picture, they're still going through hardship. They're still trying to find enough food to eat. They're still wondering what their future is going to look like. But yet here, in the middle of it all, they had a smile on their face and they had joy. I show you that because oftentimes we need to remind ourselves that joy and pain coexist. Joy and pain coexist. And so as we think about different aspects of joy this Christmas, we need to remind ourselves that that's one of the things about joy. And in that picture, I think, illustrates it so well because they still, those children still have hardships and have pain, but yet they are filled with joy because of the clean water. That's the strange thing about joy. It seems that we need to be reminded that we think from time to time that the only way we can have joy is to be completely absent of pain. But that's not true. Matter of fact, if you're waiting for that moment, you may discover a, a deep disappointment. Joy and pain, they coexist. In our fallen world, joy and pain exist side by side. And really, to be honest with you, there's no way to separate it. That's the way life is. I know, don't you love that? Isn't that great news that joy and pain go together? But you know what? That's what the power of the gospel is about. Even though you may have pain and difficulty in your life, even though you may have heartache, even though you may sense the losses and, and struggle with difficulties in your health and in your finances, even though you may struggle with relationships that are broken and hurting, in the midst of that pain, you can find great joy as you focus on the Savior. Our lives today are a constant balance of joy and pain as we walk through the experiences of life. And I think we're, we, like, those, like the, the message that the angel gave to the shepherds, we need to have that message. Don't be afraid that as you journey through life and as you experience pain, don't let it also take away your joy. You can have joy and pain at the same time. Remember, joy and happiness is not the same thing, you know. It's not about smiling every day. It's not about 
having a giddy laugh all the time. That's not what joy is. Joy is about having that profound, deep sense of peace. That everything's okay because of the Savior. And so we need to be reminded of that to not be afraid. So I want to ask you this morning, what circumstances in your life are causing you to fear? What, do you, what are you afraid of today? What pain are you going through that is overshadowing and stealing from you the presence of joy that God wants to give you? What feels like it is spinning out of control in your life? And this morning, as you think about that, those questions, I just want to encourage you. You have a Savior who has come to give you great joy, even in the midst of your pain. Any amens to that? Amen. amen. And so we need to realize that those places where the angel spoke that message about do not be afraid are those same places he's speaking into our lives today. The angel's message back then on that first Christmas needs to penetrate very deeply our lives today and realize that this gospel that we are a part of is not something that's weak and it has no ability to help us in our time of pain, but it can give you joy even though you're going through pain. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. There is good news and great joy. The book of James takes this concept even a little bit further when he says, consider it pure joy. Now, I just think, man, he's lost it. Consider, consider it pure joy. But that's the truth. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Really? Can you face trials and consider it pure joy? Yes, you can. As we walk in relationship with God, He changes everything. He turns everything on its head. He helps us to be reminded that there is a deeper reality that's at work than just the superficial. We see what scratches the surface. God is at work in deeper ways. There is an unseen source of life that is flowing within us, that can nourish us, that can strengthen us, that can refresh us, that can cleanse us, that can give us hope that we just can't see. But yet, it's there. And that's why you can consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. There's that unseen source that's standing by, ready to help you. Do you need that source today? That source is not the latest psychology. The source is not the government. That source is not any of those things. That source is Jesus. Sweet and simple. Joy and pain. I want to tell you this morning as your pastor that I'm sorry for the pain you're going through. I'm sorry for the heartache that you have to carry through life. Maybe the loss of loved ones and the loss of hope and dreams. I'm sorry for all that pain. But you know what? Our God's come to give you great joy even in the midst of the pain. If you focus on Him. So as we journey towards Christmas... Remember that joy is yours, even in the midst of pain. Second of all, there, I love this, there's joy and connection. So I'm going to explain that in a moment. But joy and connection, or being, being in community is where you'll find joy. Those pictures that I love to show of faces that are so excited about getting clean water, one thing I've noticed over the years is that whenever water comes to a, to, to a village, it doesn't just impact one person. It overflows, and the village is dancing and shouting, and they're so excited together as a body. That joy just overflows throughout the whole community. It isn't just one person who's super excited and filled with joy. It's the whole village that's excited. And that's the way joy is. Joy is contagious. All right? Negativity is contagious, too. So if you know someone like that, run. All right? But joy is contagious. And so as we think about joy, this, this Christmas season, an aspect of joy, we need to realize that joy comes when we are connected. People today want to isolate themselves, want to separate themselves, and then they wonder why life is such a challenge. You're never meant to be alone. You're never meant to walk alone. You're never meant to journey alone. There is no badge of honor in saying, I did it by myself. That's a trick of the devil. We're meant to be in connection. We're meant to be in community. And you will find that joy can be yours by being connected in community. Yes, we can also be very challenging and trying to one another.
but I'd rather put up with that than miss out on the joy that I also enjoy. So this morning, I want to encourage you to think about how joy also comes through connection. The good news of Christ, the good news of Christmas, is the good news of joy for all people. Notice that? It's for all people. It's in community. It's in connection. That life-giving joy is meant to bubble over. It's meant to spill from your life, to leak from your life, and to touch the lives of others. Matter of fact, if you have joy in your life, you can't help to bubble over. Do you know that? You ever meet someone? You just in their presence, you think, I just love talking to that person. Because you're in their presence and joy just spills over. Next thing you know, I don't know what they have, but I just enjoy talking to them. Boy, there's something about them. And you just love being with them. You ever meet anybody like that? Raise your hand if you met somebody like that. Phew, I'm hoping I'm like that. All right. But you, you meet them and, and joy, you can't help but, but be impacted. And it's, it's like you're getting a virus. Instead of, instead of COVID, you're getting, the, you're getting joy virus. There we go. It's spilling over. And every one of us has a chance to experience that joy because Jesus came to save us all. He came to really provide it for us. And that joy is found not only in times of pain, yes, but also in times of community, connection. In fact, you and I are reminded time and time again that the coming of Jesus and even the promise of his second coming are meant to be a source of joy to all, all of us in creation. Jesus, when he came, he came to set things right. He came to redeem the entire world from sin and death. And that good news wasn't just for the shepherds who were on the hillside that night. That good news is not just for those of us who have the privilege of sitting here in Canada. That good news is for the whole world. It should spill over. Joy is, should be uncontained and uncontainable by borders or by governments. It should be something that crosses every nationality, every race. It is something that happens when we are in community together. Psalm 96, 11 to 13 says this, Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad, let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creations rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. Matter of fact, we should read that text before we go to church on Sunday morning. Sometimes if people roll in the church, you think, boy, they're, they're going through a rough time. They're looking pretty sad. But you know what? When we come together... I hope somehow we can help you to catch a little bit of the joy that spills over from our lives to your lives and that we can help each other. Fear and pain is what isolates us, but it, joy is what brings us together in connection. And the joy of Jesus coming on that first Christmas is a joy that goes out into all the earth and he's trying to connect us to himself, but I think he also wants us to connect to one another. I love our taste of Christmas we're going to have in a few moments. I hope that we hear conversations of people talking to one another and just enjoying the connection together. I think it is beautiful. It is like music when I hear God's people talking. Some people say when you go to church on Sunday morning, you know, you meet people, boy, everyone's so noisy before the service, you know, I just can't, I can't believe that. They're all talking and you know, all that stuff. To me, I love it. I love God's people greeting one another, meeting one another, encouraging one another. It is beautiful fragrance. So don't be quiet here, all right? But let the joy overflow and encourage one another in community. Finally this morning, the, the last aspect of joy that I want you to consider is, is the response that joy wants us to have. So what is our response to joy? What do we do when joy suddenly interrupts our everyday lives? What do we do when it sets up camp alongside of the mundane things you have on your schedule? What do you do when it's a painful time you're going through? How do we live in that balance of joy and pain until Jesus comes? How do we foster and experience joy that is offered to us? Sometimes it's easy to be joyful, but other times it's not easy. 
I, I, I'll be the first to admit that. It's not always easy. Sometimes our struggles and our hurts are so overwhelming that we feel like we're trapped and we're bound by our fears. And I understand that. But Jesus came to set you free from that. Joy can feel like something that is so far away, so distant, maybe even impossible. But I want you to know that the Bible tells us that when we begin to worship, we will also begin to discover joy. And as a matter of fact, joy is something that will lead to worship. And just the opposite, too. When you begin to worship God, He begins to introduce joy into your life. See how it goes? The Bible shows us that the appropriate response to joy is always worship. And, as, and I would suggest that worship um, can jumpstart our joy, but only if we fix our eyes on Jesus rather than our, our immediate problems and our fears. So in this Christmas story, the angel announced the good news of great joy, and then the entire host began to praise God. Notice here that the shepherds immediately, they went to see where baby Jesus was, and what did they do? They worshipped him. See? The response was worship. And then they left there telling everyone they saw about him. Matthew even tells us that the wise men responded to the joy of, of their message. It said, it says in Matthew chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, it says, When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. See? Are you overjoyed this morning? You see our star? All right. So they, the wise men saw the star. They were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And they bowed down and they worshipped him. See? Worship or joy and worship go together. When joy is in your life, you want to go to worship. You want to worship God. Privately, publicly, you want to worship him. And so this morning, I want to encourage you to think about that for a moment. I want you to put yourself in the shoes of the shepherds. Those shepherds, those men, those rough and tumble men out there in the thick of the night, they heard the great news of great joy, the good news of great joy. And they began to worship God, and that joy, and then the joy they had when they worship was an incredible thing for those men that you think, wow. How could you ever get those men, maybe even those men, uh, maybe even on the countryside that night, some of those shepherds might even raise their hands. Can you imagine that? They raise their hands in worship. Can you, can you imagine people doing that? <laughs> yes, I'm being facetious, but yeah. Those, those men, when they encounter God, their lives are transformed and changed. And may our lives be transformed and changed, and may we discover great joy as we do that. As I conclude our message this morning, I want you to know that the brokenness of our fallen world stands at odds with Christ's joy. I know that as I speak to you about joy, the brokenness of our world does everything it can to pull that from our sight and say, oh, no, you can't. Life on earth here is too hard. I recognize that we, on a daily basis, have to straddle that tension that tension where in our physical world, yeah, there's pain, but in our spiritual world, there is redemption, joy, grace. And we deal with that tension on a daily basis. So as I conclude this message, what would I like you to do so that you can discover joy on your journey this Christmas? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you three suggestions today. This is your homework. You ready for homework? You said, oh, shoot, I didn't want to go to a church where they give homework. All right. <laughs> But here's your homework. First, this Christmas, take time to connect with others. Don't isolate yourselves. It's too easy to do that. You can find joy with others, and that joy can be contagious. Second of all, take time and make, the, make it a choice to be purposely thankful and full of gratitude for all that God has done for you. You and I, as we sit here this morning, we are... The richest, some of the richest people in the world. I don't care what your bank account says. You, the fact that you're here, you're in the richest part of the world. And you should be thankful. There's always something to be thankful for. And so this Christmas, have that gratitude 
and let it begin to make way into even a greater sense of joy, even in the midst of your pain. And finally, let's worship God with all of our hearts. Let's worship Him for who He really is, regardless of how we feel, regardless if someone around us is grumpy. Let's worship God with the fact for who He is. Even that alone is powerful. The circumstances of our lives today can steal our joy, but even in the darkest times, even in the darkest moments, we can worship God not for what He does for us, but simply for who He is. Can you do that this Christmas? And let the joy of that first Christmas still be alive this Christmas, 2023. May God show us that joy and let us experience it in its fullness. Let's stand together as we close. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, God, that you brought us here. Thank you for how our church is uh, online through our live stream. Thank you for everyone in this room. Thank you for everyone that's in the overflow. And we just thank you, God, for what you're doing. There are great days ahead. But Lord, those great days are not because of, of me or because of a building or anything like that. Those great days are there because of the good news of great joy that you gave to us on that first Christmas, that you backed up through your death on the cross, and you made us victorious when you conquered the grave. And so God, today, help us to lift our heads, help us to go from this place, help us, Lord, to realize that we are more than conquerors through Christ. And so God, today, may that joy overflow into every one of our families, may it overflow into our private moments with you as we read our Bibles and pray, but may it also overflow in those moments as we connect with our community, both here and our greater community. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us. I don't always understand why you do, but I am so thankful that you do. And so, God, today, may you encourage us and may you help us just to have a real sense of your presence this Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen.